Okay, greetings and goodness. Took a little while for the core to uh, activate. So, all right, we're going to do uh, messages and to the Q and A. So, messages. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to do that. Greetings to you. You are the Surfium, alien beings, angel beings, alien angel. It doesn't really matter technically. So yes, we are connecting from spirits. So you're. We do feel cloning, becoming more part of your society, becoming knowledgeable of it. Of course, it's not going to happen instantly, but some of you receive downloads of how it's operating. Obviously, you have a clone present that's making itself known. And yes, nothing is going to make itself too clear too quickly, but you'd see a lot of shifts and vibrations of basically unmasking your Earth, at least behind the scenes. They're just energies that cannot hide forever. Obviously, many want your alien disclosure, but there are other disclosures to occur first. One of them is cloning because it's been used not well in your past. And some of you are becoming more open to receiving information of how it works and the deceitfulness that is along with it. Even discover your own clone connections in past lives and current lives. So it's just a matter of time for your new awakening to occur. So basically this type of knowledge, cloning, aliens become second nature where it won't matter anymore. Right now it's still a discovery, but it'll be a time like it's like you know it just like you know your name, basically. Of course, not at that point fully yet. Some of you are to a certain extent, but there's still a lot of mysteries. Even the mysteries of the earth would be known just like you know anything in your own home. Greetings to you. We are Martians. We are from Orion, but we are Martian beings. Uh, some of us, yes, are giants. Well, depending on your what you would see as a giant, but our connection to your Earth is much of it is in the rock and the stone of your planet. It's almost like our society crashed into yours. So Venus is here through crystal energies and Mars is here through the rock. You even see some of your mountains are contributed from us. So you might look at a mountain differently, especially uh, in areas of Utah, mm -hmm. places like that. Well, it looks very Martian like. It looks like that for a reason. We're not that distant after all, but Venus is very connected to you also, but it's more connected to Antarctica. Mm -hmm. That's all we have at this time. <laughs> Greetings to you. We are the Andromedans. Blessings to your society. Yes, much of your colors comes from other planets. 
Of course, there's many colors that are not here at this time. But basically, the color formation of your world and how it looks is basically what is needed for this reality. And yes, there are dull colors that are also very vibrant. Usually, the more wild or vibrant colors or colors they can visualize in your own vibration, more of the higher dimension energies. So as your Earth goes into a higher vibration, you see new colors be developed. So if you're looking for a new Earth, but it has to be new, right? <laughs> And it's not here to look like the old Earth. Uh, but basically, then you even find ways of discovering new... I mean, just a color in general puts out a new vibration. It's like finding a new tone in music that has not been synchronized before. So. Uh, but yes, we're on Andromeda Energies here to assist you with your questions whenever you're ready. Since... No blessings. Greetings, Andromeda. Thank you for coming in. That was pretty interesting with the comments you made about the new Earth looking completely different. Um, mm -hmm. Are there going to be any similarities or it's just going to be a completely different environment in a higher dimensional? Well, the color scheme will be very different and we believe much will be moved around. It's hard to really say at this time how you're going to make it look. Cause, I mean, we have our vision of what it's going to look like, but yes, it won't be recognized. Mm, interesting. Our, yeah, you won't even ever recognize your plan. Wow. I, I was mean, just thinking like crystal mountains. I was thinking too small, but you're just saying well, that's yeah, not the right mean, There's a possibility this world will look like a pink planet instead of a blue one. <laughs> yeah, I saw pink sand beaches and stuff like yeah. that. Very cool. Well, thank you for that. Thank you again for coming in. Uh, first this evening, we have Daria. Pink planet. What up? That's so cool. Well, where if we're going higher, it's going to be more gay. I don't know. Just kidding. So um, I was just, uh, I think I want to ask for the whole commun community about, is there any, I mean, any form of, uh, how do you call it, the, the robot that films um, Mars? The roof, rover, is that true or is it a hoax? Just well, there is some the truth to it. It's not all true. No, it is seeing things there that, that is not for public. So a lot of it is there's half truths there. Okay, so my questions for tonight is: Do you have any messages for me on? Well, yes, you're going more, as you know, into your subconscious. You're going deeper into yourself, but you're going where, well, basically this world, you kind of ran your course here on this planet. I mean, as you probably feel that. Yeah. Like, not that you're going to be leaving anytime soon, but it's kind of like, kind of hit a roadblock. It's like, well, it's going to do with this. So, <laughs> uh, so, I mean, your energies are still needed, but you need something somewhere else to go. Yeah. So you're going I mean... more into the astral. I mean, like I have been deciphering and filtrating every energy that's on the planet. And I just know what's going on from every corner and every aspect of it. And then I'm a little bit, okay, can I just go now? Like, can I know mm -hmm. much more? And then I'm stuck with this body yeah. having a 24-7 a <laughs> weekdays <laughs> and just looking at them. Yeah, okay. So well, it's what kinda, you were... Yes, yeah, it's kind of like you're on a mountain... Uh, seeing the world differently. So it's just that your point of view is still needed here. So until mm -hmm. it's fully, until certain events happen, you have to kind of, it's kind of like you're sitting in your bird's nest or something like that. But <laughs> yeah, you are, like that. you are going into a, yeah, even we had a message and it got taken away from us. <laughs> yeah. So, but either way, you're going deeper into your own uh, self. So, Yes, different colors, different realities, just other versions of Earth. So, yes, there's a yeah. message that got taken, but it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know what it meant because I've seen it, and mm -hmm. and 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 I have really cool dreams. I just want to say that I mm -hmm. feel like I'm always on drugs, but I don't touch any, and that's so cool. And I wish more people could experience that also. Because that is actually going deeper into your soul, I guess. And mm -hmm. you're being told what to do with your life, where to look at to, I mean, heal. It's like 
Now you have we heal like a bond from your ex and he's not even attached to you anymore. He's attached to your friends and your families and let's yeah. So I had actually a dream that I was trying to get rid of him in a witch house mm -hmm. and tried to dump him in a hole and he was peeking out, out of the hole all the time and I took a big hammer and hammered him down to the hole again and Later on, I was driving a car, but I was passenger this time, and the road was patched from like million holes. I guess I was busy with the hammer. <laughs> so, well, yes, relationships are like um, like hornets are like leeches. Yeah, they leech on you know your family, your friends, everyone, because they got nowhere to go because nobody loves them. Well, they don't love themselves, so. Yeah, it's it's this world is kind of like a almost like human cattle in some regard, unfortunately. <laughs> the way it's treated. As more connect more to themselves, they feel more free. Yeah, so go more into their astral body and let go of uh, the distractions here. Because you let go of the distractions as you can see, so you see where it can bring you to. So. Yeah. Well, but yes, the boyfriend is or the ex is a yeah a kind of like a dog or a a not a very smart one, but one that's trying to uh, find an still, identity. Still, a, still another one's dream. Yeah, so he's just trying to find an identity for himself. He can't seem to do it. So yeah, it's turning into Archon energy. He's not willing to look at himself, so. Well, he wants others to praise him. Yeah. Wants to be worshipped. Yeah. That's why some take a form of a cat or a dog. Cool. Well, not that cool, but I mean. Yes, you understand. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you well, blow him away. Mm -hmm. I mean, like blow, like blow him away. I mean, like, I just didn't blow him away. I <laughs> turn him into match. Like this is a box of match, and you're like the last match here. And then I fired up every match, and I'm like, this is the last match. You want me to fire it up? I just do the agonies, and I mean, I him. No, I just don't want to go there. But anyways, thank you for oh, asking my questions. You put him on a dynamite planet. <laughs> yeah, that's me, all right. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, thank you for that. Up next, we got Logan. Greetings. Greetings. For my first question tonight, I had a dream last night about, it was like the morning-ish time, and I walked out the front door with my dad, and we saw a giant like UFO, uh, UFO ship with three light blue lights. And as soon as we went out there, uh, I heard me and my dad's names being called by the ship, and then it gave a speech, or the beings in it gave a speech, and a whole bunch of people like gathered outside to see what it was talking about. And it had two other scout ships. I'd just like to know this... Uh, the bigger UFO. I'd like to know that any of if any of the beings operating it have any messages for me. Yes, it does. Like there's Zeta and some Palladian there, but it's basically like a disclosure reality that you're connected to. And it feels like it's another version of Earth where the disclosure is occurring. A much easier Earth than this one. Yes, one that you're there for not too long, bring in disclosure, and you move on to the next place. <laughs> cool. So, I mean, you're living in society, you know, for like 30 years or 40 years, but then you bring it in when the time is right. This world obviously is not as easy as that. <laughs> so. That's for sure. Yes. And for my second question, I would just like to know if there are any messages from any of my guides. Well, you're about walking knowledge when I understand there's an Anunnaki connection that you have not fully saw or want to see yet but this is very deep and not everyone's going to want to hear it i have friends within an anunnaki that so it might make others upset so because they have a bias against them uh but mm. it seems like you have a neutral energy so you're going to find that some beings that you're connected to that you're fine with the others are going to lose their mind but 
you know, the, you know, the connections you're going to make, you're going to see things differently among many people, it seems. Blessings. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we have Michael. Greetings. Yes, greetings. Well, my first question is, usually when I sleep, I'm, I don't usually dream, but in the past month or less, I'll wake up at 3 a.m. and I'll have such lucid dreams. And I don't know why or what have you, but I do. I am prescribed Xanaxes and I do take them before I go to sleep because I can't go to sleep. Um, but could, do you know, I mean, and it's weird because the dreams are so sometimes real. I can't always put them together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there are paradox realities that you go to. One of the reasons why you can't dream or can't sleep because you're battling this reality. So it's like it's hard to go to sleep when you're at war. So it's hard, you know, even when you're on a war battlefield, you feel bombs going by. It's like, how can you sleep during that? That's what's happening in your reality, as you know, even if you're not seeing that. But, you know, you know, through different people are connected to, you know, without going into details. And so when you go into this lucid dream world, you're getting information from your astral self of what is necessary connected to other realities. So you're going through timelines constantly. It is seems. it positive or negative? That's well, a little bit of both. It's everything. You see in different scenarios, especially where the, where, where timelines, you go through many timelines of, uh, you kind of pick a timeline, see what you want to experience. So you took an alien experience here. That's why you're here. You could have took a different one. <laughs> so. Okay. And for my second question is, I've been lonely and uh, I really don't trust human women at all. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but I know that I'm c- connected to the blue Palladians. And I know that I go to the fourth dimension and sometimes the fifth dimension. And I was wanting mm-hmm. to know if there was some way I could have a a significant other that is a, a blue Palladian and that well, I could be in contact with. Well, that's, yeah, so that's going to become more common. I mean, you're that helps you connect to the astral realm. So having a an alien relationship or spirit, however you want to look at it, however you want to word it, uh, it's basically just visualizing what that would look like to you and what name would come to you. What would be your, your ideal relationship? Some would call it a fantasy, but actually you're tapping into it. So just go by what you feel, basically. <laughs> it's a little yep. bit strange at first, but you'll get used to it. <laughs> and I heard that there was 11 different um, species of Palladians. There's more, but yeah. <laughs> and not mm-hmm. all of them were good. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course. But but the the blue ones are uh but but I, I can't say the word good there are good ones but they're also not so positive ones either but just put your intentions to connect to a positive energy i mean this will help you trust more people here so as you make that connection and you know it's fine because yes yeah, you can go through mistrust as you can make those connections that's something that you have to go through if that's something you need to go through, you don't have to go through that. Okay. So just keep it in your intentions if you have a positive connection. And you, know, you get as many relationships as you want. So you just don't need to do that. <laughs> it's, okay. Yeah, no one's stopping. That's an earth thing where you just need to be with one person. Nothing wrong with that, but you know, multiple relationships, it's nothing. No one's stopping that. Do you guys still stay in contact with Alex Collar? If I'm saying his last name correctly. He, uh, yeah, I'm not. We're not the group exactly that's doing that, but yes, sir. Because he enlightened me a lot about how advanced you guys are, mm-hmm. and yes. it was good info. Yes. Well, thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Okay, thank you. Up next, we have Silverclaw. 
Hello, guys. Yes, greetings. Hello to you. Um, my uh, first question, um, I have these Bluetooth, and um, when they get low in uh, battery, um, there's like a very loud, like a... Uh, like a like notice message from the um from the bluetooth and it seems to be really loud and i was just wondering if it's causing me damage and how much no we don't see any damage there at all very minor if anything there's nothing to worry about oh okay M maybe my ears are just sensitive or something yes well yeah it's like screaming in your ear but it's not that bad well, that's good to know. Like, I, I was thinking, like, maybe I'll, you know, if I keep using them, I'll lose my hearing. Like, oh, so you need, to lose your hearing, you need to have loud music in your ear a lot. <laughs> like, oh, wow. <laughs> Yours are pretty resilient. Uh, I'm learning that. Thank you. <laughs> my second question um, uh, Any inspiring messages for me uh, at this time? Oh, uh, yes. You're creating new timelines. You are bringing people into your life to help elevate you. Uh, but you're so skeptical of your own intuition, not always trusting your intuition. So as you allow that to come through, I mean, even for us to bring this message in, you just got more, you're just trusting yourself. You're, you're giving yourself more slack to believe that you're accurate in your connections. So, so you're making progress. So just keep trusting your inner, inner self. Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much, guys. Blessings. Peace out. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Well, next, we got Dragon. Hello, Andromedans. Yes, greetings to you. Greetings to you. How y'all doing? Doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Thank you for being here. Um, I, I just had a dream not too long ago uh, about uh, uh, the dude in my dream. His name here, he's an actor. His name's Christian Slater. And uh, the dream basically where is uh, I was with my family and uh, I was just in my room, you know, chilling. And uh, and my family comes up with a movie. They had a movie in their hand. It's like, hey, you want to come watch this new movie? I was like, sure. Why not? So we go and we watch the movie. And uh, it was so weird about it is that uh, while I was watching the movie, I was also in the movie at the same time. And so uh, Christian Slater was uh, going, he was supposed to go meet somebody at an mm -hmm. office building. And so we go into this building and, uh, and we had an appointment or something, but the person wasn't there. So uh, he gets on his cell phone and he starts calling, like trying to find out where this dude's at. And there's security guards, officers that were there. And uh, and they uh, they grabbed his phone out of his hand and it, it, it made me mad. So I pushed the officer as uh, like, what are you doing that for? And so they so they started trying to arrest me. And what's so weird about it is that uh, one of the officers that was trying to arrest me, he put his fingers on my pulse and he said, go to sleep. And that's really unusual. And then all of a sudden um, uh, the time freezed. Like everybody in the room, everything froze. And then I had like a bag of something, money or so. I don't know. I had a bag. And so I zoomed out of that uh, building and I went around to the corner and it had a group over there and they like dispersed the area. And now I watch a couple of his movies and like The Legend of Billy Jean. It seems like in queue. I just wonder what my connection is with him and the movie and so on. Thank you. Well, Andromeda. Like yes, can we help you? You're going to answer a question. Yes, one moment. That's some interference there. Uh, so that was a one moment. That was a men in black reality that you're connected to. And cr yes, even here we're trying to connect to it. We get kind of blocked on it, but it was a scenario of reality. So you're getting different realities where Christian Slater was connected to. So both of you known each other. Part of him is kind of programming realities. I feel like you were there to, uh, you know, pull some of that back. So some of the manipulations are there to, you know, unmanipulate the realities, <laughs> and you're allowed to see it. Uh, that's pretty deep, actually. So be able to see something like that is, yeah, so you're going into different realms, as you can see. Obviously, as we're speaking about, it, it's getting blocked too. But yeah, let's go ahead. Yes, that was, that was awesome. Yeah, it was a weird dream. And, and uh, you know, Christian Slater, I was like, I, I just, you just came up out of nowhere in my dream. 
Um, all right, thank you for that. Second question is I'll just leave it open. Just connect with any of my galactic family aspects, energies. Who wants to come through? Thank you. Well, yeah, so the men in black that were there, you kind of push them aside to see what they see and other realities. So you're actually healing different realities that they're manipulating to hold back. So they can't, like, even in this world, they can't really control it 100%. Beings come in and change things around ever so slightly. And you probably feel that. So you're doing that here, too. They're just showing what you're doing on other places, but you're actually doing it here also. And Christian Slater is, I believe, more on the positive side. They're disclosed information to a certain degree. Uh, other worlds is more deeper. Here is kind of laid back a little bit, but he still has a presence here. But others, he's like a leader in another reality, but so are you awesome. So. Blessings. Thank you so much. Blessings. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if Brayden has questions or if he's going to ask his. Uh, but So for the time being, we'll move on to Christy and see if I get oh, Brayden's yeah. questions. Oh, you're here? Okay. Yeah. And Braden's next. Okay. Blessings. Uh, welcome, uh, Andromeda. Hello. Yes. Uh, I was just wondering if you had any messages for me. Uh, I see you skipping timelines a lot recently. Yes, you're connecting more to the tall white energies to heal uh, heal your heart. From what we see, there's been a lot of blockages. Like what timeline you want, what time frame you wish to be part of. We also see moving, and that's been brought up here and there. There's a part of you that wants to move or wanting to move, or there's some kind of possibility that it isn't made completely sure of it, but it's in the works. That's all we're seeing with that. Okay, thank you. Yes, I, 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 I'm interested in moving, but I'm not quite sure where. I was thinking no. possibly British Columbia or something. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah that seems good. Yeah, somewhere yeah. that's reasonable and rent as you know <laughs> that's fair i have family in Kelowna, and my second question um are there any other messages for me yes you're actually mastering timelines doesn't mean you have a a full understanding of where things are going because that's not always necessary but you're bringing into your reality what is what is needed and you're getting more you're clearing out blockages for things to happen more fluidly than before. It, it's not going to be completely clear, like like such as a move. Obviously, that won't be the easiest, but you'll find your destination, and it could be you know it'll be smoother than it would be in the past. So, you're just finding a way of making things easier for you, is what we're seeing. Anyway. Okay. Nice. Very, very nice. Thank you. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Up oh, next, we got Christy. Greetings. Yes, greetings. As the Martians came in to begin with, and they spoke about the rocks in the yeah. southwest, and in there from Orion, the Martians are. Mm -hmm. And yes. so, uh, you know, I I researched those those stones and rocks and stuff from all over, from Peru and everywhere too. And can you tell me more about my connection with? With those, with the Martians and um, maybe well, like being yeah. cedars, like cedars well, of their reality. Yes, it is. It's basically like you find an area, Utah or Arizona or even Mexico, where there's those desert areas, and you feel that Martian vibration. So think about taking a civilization, like you have Atlantis, and that pushes that in the ocean. So at Mars, you take Mars and you push it into a planet or it falls into a planet or however word you want to use. So it combines itself with the, with the Earth. And so you kind of see your Martian perspective, mm -hmm. like what you're picking up. Because, uh, yeah, those type of thoughts aren't usually used mm -hmm. normally. But as you focus mm -hmm. on it, you're surprised. And then your Zeta side will be able to pick up on it too. Yeah, I was looking at them today, actually, so I felt that yeah. that was the message for me from them, too, because yeah. I've yes. been research researching them all day, mm -hmm. um, you know, just trying to look at it and stuff more, mm -hmm. so that's good. So um, my second question is, what have me and Hayden been doing in astral? Uh, sometimes he's 
like a twin brother of yours. Uh, what do you say? See in previous lifetimes, they're showing. Um, we've also had you know male, female lifetimes. Uh, so the astral self here, at least that's what your guys wants you to show. You've been both of you have been kind of you know on secret like ops jobs, you know, secret agents. Probably know that already, <laughs> but. Uh, and in astral, you're kind of doing that still. Uh, you do have, yes, part of you does still work with Orions at times, but you're kind of a free agent at this moment. But yes, you're here to basically unlock energy. Some of it is Atlantean connected. Also, it's just basically what I see in the astral is to pull out Atlantean knowledge as necessary. Because some people are just Atlantean people, they just need that for their own healing help. help a lot more energy here. That's not only what you're doing, but uh, interesting enough, I do see Tom Cruise there. Not the Scientology stuff, but more of like he's kind of kind of an operative himself because he kind of plays one on TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wondered, too, about because Arkansas, you know, the Ar Arclantis, and, and we're going right. to go there in May. Me yeah. And Aiden are going to go to the Crystal Mine again. And, yeah. um, but I don't know if I want to. I want to move there, but uh, you'd said that he wouldn't uh, like it. But maybe he could get used to it. So it's still kind of up in the air, though. Oh, you. Oh, yeah. Do whatever you want. If you, yeah. If you like it, yeah, he'll adjust to it. Well, yeah, it, since it's high vibration and stuff there. Well, part of it might have been in the past. He wasn't. It wasn't time for. It, but I feel now. I feel those timelines are open now. Yeah, maybe visiting first to help him see it more oh, yeah, and definitely. feel it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Any change is always kind of, you know, it's always difficult at first. Oh, yeah, for him especially. Yes, yeah, because he grounds into the ground. Or, yeah, he doesn't he just stay. Yeah, but you need to move him around in certain places, though. Yeah, to get out of the board, I think, here. Yeah. Well, your mission's done there. I believe that's mostly what it means. Yeah, that feels right. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, blessings. Thank you. Up next, I have Hazel's question. She asked me to read. Her first question, uh, she says, I connect with an energy from an inner child perspective whom I call beautiful, nice lady. I feel an Andromeda and motherly connection with her. Do you have any thoughts on my relationship with her and how I can best foster that connection well that's an energy to bring out more of your higher self it's like a a fairy godmother it's just basically your kind of like your god consciousness it's basically your connection to source yes it is a being it's a being of like a mentor so you just see it as a mentor to see what do i need to learn from, what do you have for me today what do you need what do i need to learn from you today and as you get used to that because right now you're I feel there's some hesitance because you're not sure what this is. I mean, you do know it's fine, but you're not sure how far you can go with it. But it's like an oracle. You can ask it, ask this being any question. See what comes through. I mean, sometimes it's better just to allow messages to come through. Because sometimes you, you know, you put a message out. It's like, well, we want you to know this <laughs> instead. So, because usually that's what your soul is asking for. That's just, Hey, thank you. She didn't put down a second question, so I'll just ask if she has any uh, further messages. Yes. Do, do, does she have uh, any other messages for a second question? Oh, any messages? Uh, I do see her connection to uh, Yeshua. She does a healing energy with Yeshua's energy, which you don't hear about very often. It's healing that energy. So this is a person that's supposed to be healing everyone, but she's healing him, especially, you know, she has to go by her perspective. Like you take a, somebody like a, a Jesus, and what is your perspective of? Do you feel a lot of pain? Do you see deceitful energy? What is it that you see? Um, we're, we just see her energy connecting to it to heal because there's a lot of that going on. So, <laughs> so we do that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Blessings. Up uh, next, we got Tristan. Uh, greeting you, Andromedans. Great to see you. Uh, that's it. Uh, my first question is about a dream. Um, I don't remember many specifics, but it was around a week ago, and I remember talking to this giant 
a woman that seemed like a warrior or um I have just yeah. the impression of looking up, up at, yeah, looking up at her, and and I remember being either frustrated or something. Um, I can't remember, but it seemed important. Yeah, could you tell me about that? Yeah, so it was like a mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're like her son. You're kind of deceitful, not doing what she says, doing whatever you want. You know, just you know, just not. You know, she was just getting super frustrated. I not that you're doing anything bad, but you know, you just weren't following her. Instructions. Not to have a giant woman as a parent. So, it, what we see with this is that there was a village. And you're there to bring her message to the village people, and you're kind of hesitant. It's like nobody's gonna believe that. Nobody's gonna talk to me about. You know, that's what we see. And what's funny though, I think you're like a little person, like a midget person, <laughs> in this reality. But you can go by what you feel. <laughs> Because the, the, this village of people were not big on giant people at all. <laughs> like giants, it's like some of you and humans or relationships. Like hell no. <laughs> okay. So that's what we see there. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's why I was telling her, "Look, mom, this just won't work." Um, yeah, she came back into your life. You can see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. She's not done teaching. Well, it's just part of you to look at different realities. She's just showing, you know, accomplishment. I believe you did accomplish what you're there to do in that. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Um, uh, my other question is um, more of a theoretical one, which is um, are there other 3D worlds like ours, but we're people are not don't come in disconnected like we do um and how does that work out or is that a function of being in this very solid 3d world where we don't have um yes. memories and stuff yeah well this world is a less drama so this world okay. i mean it, it just as you know it finds a way to have problems with something because it's growing so it's going <laughs> really deep other worlds are like, why would you put yourself to that? Because I'm growing. <laughs> Maybe we don't make any sense, but growth, when is that ever supposed to make any sense? So other worlds, mm -hmm. they grow, but not like this place. This place takes us to a whole new level. It takes an adult mm -hmm. and turns into a child, <laughs> as you can see. Not many worlds mm -hmm. can do that. So, yeah, there are more mature plants out there, yes. They can, they, a lot of plants can start in the third dimension. A lot of them start in the fourth dimension. They don't have to start in the third dimension. But when they start in third, yeah, they, there's their easier worlds, sometimes they're feline worlds, sometimes they're canine worlds, sometimes they're humanoid worlds. And they just have a, they work together. They might not always get along, but then they'll, they'll sort out what they're not getting along. But they want to keep progressing. Say, hey, look, we're, we created a spaceship, and, oh, how do you, what do you do with this? Do you fly somewhere with it, or you cook with it? What do you do with it? So... <laughs> It's like you start discovering things because there's always somebody helping you, <laughs> like an alien. Yeah. Like, hey, you look, they're doing well with each other. Here, give them this, it's like a gift. And so society evolves. Imagine many of you would like to run that planet right now, <laughs> but this one's going deep into the soul. Maybe not making any sense, but need. It's not supposed to make any sense. When does growth ever make sense? Mm. So it just takes it to a whole. <laughs> Is that is that why we're so unhappy, or is that separate? Well, some of you feel the vibrations of other unhappy people, so that makes you unhappy because you feel the torment of others, especially homeless people or even rich people. Sometimes rich people can have more torment than poor than somebody in poverty. So, I mean, at least some in poverty they don't have to worry about losing anything. Just what are they going to eat tomorrow? <laughs> even that, they might go. I mean, some of them are happier than anybody else that has a full time job. So mm -hmm. it's just the vibration you're feeling from other people. This it's their lessons. You're feeling the turmoil they're going through, the inner war. Okay. So yeah. Oh, good. All right. Thank Blessings. you very much. Blessings. Yeah, you know, some days you could feel that more than others. Yes. All right. Well, thank you. Um, up next, we have April. 
Greetings. Yes, greetings. Hello. Um, yeah, I um, I have some relationship uh, questions or issues. Um, I haven't been interested in a relationship at all, like whatsoever. And it doesn't matter, like no matter what happens, somebody that I'm friends with or someone that I'm getting to know because I'm trying to meet new people that, ha you know, are on the same level as me and do more things with my life. But like every person I meet, every friend I hang out with want, you know, winds up falling in love with me and wanting to have a relationship. And there's like three different people right now that I'm like completely over overwhelmed by. Um, and one of them is my boxing coach. I started uh, Muay Thai boxing and I think I, I mean, it feels right. It feels like I'm supposed to be doing this and um, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be spending time with them, but he's mm -hmm. like, so so into me that it's um it's overwhelming and i'm not sure if it's the right decision or what i'm supposed to be doing i don't know well, I, well i guess it'll make you make your breaking point when you're no longer can learn from you're still learning from this person so i mean, it feels like it's gonna happen no matter where you go yeah so it's, uh, i mean part of it is it's good attention but I mean, at least he's putting more attention into your boxing. You'd be surprised how much more he's teaching you and your attention to other people. <laughs> so. Yeah, absolutely. He thinks so. that I have a lot of potential and I should stick with it. So it feels really good being around him and all that. But um, I just, my automatic just response is to, you know, no, no relationship. I, I'm just mm -hmm. not ready. So I don't know if this is like a test. For yeah, me. it is. It's to see how long you can put up with it. <laughs> what, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> yeah. I don't I mean, know. Are you going to endure it, which is nothing wrong with that, or just block his, you know, affection and just something he needs to learn for himself, too? So you're learning together, basically. Yeah, that's what yeah. it feels like. Mm -hmm. All right. And, okay, and then any messages for me? It does seem like you're skipping timelines, timelines where you don't have to have problems. So, like, with that person and others... So you're avoiding conflict, which is good. Okay. So some of that might become more clear to you. Of you're avoiding lessons that you don't probably, I mean, you're just making sure that's why you might feel stressed out because you're, you're, you're bypassing a lot of lessons that are being thrown at you. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. It's like, here, you can go through this. You can go through that. No, I'm not going to go through any of that. So everyone's trying to, connect with you and so it can get overwhelming as you know absolutely that's where i'm at right now my head is just spinning and i don't know how yeah. much more i can take of any of it well just realize that these aren't you don't need to focus on what you need to learn here and all that all that's just noise you know what you need for yourself that's what matters most all yeah because right. it does take you off track as you can see yeah literally that's what trying to do yeah all right it makes sense. So, yeah, it's just, what is it, eye on the needle or eye on the prize, whatever the user, you know, just focus on what you want to accomplish. And I want to keep boxing. He says I'm really good at it. So exactly. I know I'm going to so, wind up be spending a lot of time with them. So, yeah, so you just got to make, you just got to work with it. All yeah. right. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it. Blessings. Thank you. Blessings. Hey, yeah, thank you. Up next, we got Marvin. Uh, greetings, uh, uh, Dramatists. Uh, did you all get the uh, download that I sent you all before I came on? No, we're answering questions now. Oh, sorry. Well, I go ahead. Uh, just trying to get a description of what you all look like. Uh, as far as race or compared to human and stuff before I ask my questions. We look like humans like you do. I mean, some of our heads, our foreheads are a little bit larger. A lot of us are very skinny usually because uh, we get our energy from the light. We don't necessarily have to have food. So we're just basically tall, skinny people. Some of us are white, blue, greens, yellow type of people, things like that. So. <laughs> Blessings so we just have and for, elongated uh, for my first face. question. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know why I just have to, before I talk it out and stuff, I just have to get like a, you know, just like a brief description and stuff so I can get a better connection. Uh, 
But for my first question, um, I would like to know what Anunnaki uh, royal family do we connect to, and is there a name that connect the history, and during what time period and what place uh, did they reside? If you can answer that for my first question. Well, I mean, the time period is what is in history. I mean, it's before as more a time of, of Atlantean. There was no real time. So Atlantean time periods when they're here. Oh, you can connect to Enki's uh, family, Anu, which is fine. Okay, so does it have a soul connection um, with Enki and Anu? And when I look uh, look upon some of this stuff and documented documented and I feel like a certain connection, almost like a vibe or a frequency and stuff. <clears throat> Do uh do uh Inky and Anu do they feel that? Well, your connection to Anunnaki is from well, it's off world. It's not necessarily from the Inky and Anu. It's from another Anunnaki race, like one of the early races of the Anunnaki. Uh, some of them are Orion, and they're they're in different places, of course. But uh, some of them are bird-like uh, humanoid beings. Is it like a name or something I can no. look up and stuff to look research or is it just lost knowledge that I'm tapping into? There is, yeah. yeah the bird and an If you look up an and you find a half man, half bird, I believe. And that would be what you're connecting to. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm saying. They don't really have a name. Well, not for this world, no. You have to connect to your own name. And do they come through through birds all the time? Because I don't like my travel to my job coming and going. I go through like kind of uh, rural areas, and mm -hmm. sometimes I see ibis, I see a lot of hawks, I see little almost like sparrows and ravens mm -hmm. chasing hawks and stuff. Is this almost like a connection? Like, I'm almost saying, hey, this is something that you might be connected to. Uh, yes, there's also in your travels, there's a lot of zeta presence there. <laughs> But yes, they are talking to you right now and then, yes. Well, sometimes in my thoughts and stuff, even when I talk out, I, I tell them, I say, hello, class. I say, get ready and stuff. I say, this is things we're going to learn about being human today. Are they receptive upon that? So is that, I'm, are they, so I just want to say, this is still my first question and stuff, so uh, I'm going to be real quick. Do they pick up on me? Well, we have to go on to the stuff? next question. Um, but yes, it's, Yes, they open up portal energies. That's probably should go to the next question. To be fair for, right, uh, for my second question, mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to find out uh, specifically what are like the Zetas. Was I know my connection is supposed to be a teacher and, and stuff, but I'm trying to get more or less what are they trying to learn from me, and what are they picking up, and how do they feel like as far as expression. Mm -hmm when I go my day to day about encountering my coworkers and I just be my humble self, not depending on who they are and stuff, just being my normal self. Well, I just learned from you a human interaction. I mean, some Zetas feel very connected to you. Like, you know, they follow you around to just learn how to act and talk like a human. So you're, yeah, you're welcome that energy to you. So they're just, seeing how you interact with coworkers and things like that. So, and then they bring it to others and other data and they try to act it out. Maybe not always very well. Oh but. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry. Cause you could, I'm sorry. Oh man, more, more, more of them like me and stuff. I always told myself I wish yeah. to multiply myself. Well, you're uh, doing man. that. <laughs> uh. But yeah. do they feel the love when, when I do it, okay. especially when I joke with people and fuck with people? Not for, you know, just... Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. Zetas call themselves Marvin, so just to let you know. Oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Will I probably get contacted tonight or probably get messed with tonight? Probably, but in a good way. So. Okay, well, tell the classmates to kiss on the forehead, fist bump and stuff. Tell them play easy and stuff. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Stuff Bless us. Blessings. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we got Catalin. Yes, hello. 
Yes. Yeah, here you that well. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, greetings. Uh, I have uh, visited a friend like 20 minutes from here, and um, to my surprise, I have seen on the sky like a lot of chemtrails. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, they still do this like a big time? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It has to do with fear, fear of the, fear of the weather. Some are in... Some feel like it's helping climate change, but it's more poisoning people than it is helping. But it's a it's yeah, a, like I, a black ops with the government. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I know they actually poisoning. Um, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> all the 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 planes, they um, well, uh, how should I ask this? Um, do usually planes live a, a, a smoke trail or um, no. no? No, those are designed so to actually, do what they're doing. So, yeah. they're, so actually, what we see every uh, trail, it's actually chem trail. Yes, it's deliberate. Yes, it's on purpose. Uh -huh. Okay, because I hear. Um, so I talk with this guy, and he his father is like. You know, it's like seven years. You're supposed to be mature, and he's like, "No, it's this is normal from from the engines." Well, that's what they want. Why would they just flying around like that for no reason and zigzag and all that? So, no. But that's what they tell the people are flying them. Yeah. So they actually uh, is this like automated automated uh, um, systems or there's actually uh, pilot, uh, no, it's a pilot. So it's like crop dusting the way they're being told, something like that. It's for the environment, and they don't think anything of it because they need a job, and they don't listen so to actually, all the conspiracies because they need a job. So actually, they don't know what they're doing. Some are aware of the conspiracies, but they don't. They need a job. That's where it comes down to. It's like, so uh, Jesus. Wow. It's an easy job too. I really play history well. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. Um, uh, my, do you see? Uh, do you see uh, uh, free energy coming this year? I, no. I hear some rumors. <laughs> yeah, I. I, I, I mean, on a personal it. level, people might be able to develop something, but that's going to be a rumor that's going to go on forever <laughs> until. The system changes completely. So. so, so the system has to change, mm -hmm. and then this this free energy is coming, or the free energy is coming and is going to change the system. Well, some people can build it on their own. If some of the more healthier energy will come through, Europe is doing that now. But as for free energy, it's going to be a while for that. Yeah, this cleaner energy is mostly happening now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, super good. I appreciate. Yeah. Thank you very much. Blessings. Blessings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll both of those subject topics. Um, I can get yeah. you know started on very easily, uh, especially the Kim trailing, but um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for another time. Um, a blast this evening is me. Thank you again for coming in. Thank you. All right, blessings to you. Um, the other day, uh, while watching a video, I took off my glasses because my eyes felt uncomfortable wearing them. Mm -hmm. It felt like an imbalanced kind of weight that was projecting in and out of different corners of my eyes. Mm -hmm. And as I continued watching the video my with my glasses off, there was like a vibrational shift that began mm -hmm. to relieve the pressure on my eyes. And I could start to see the video uh, much more clearer as I held this vibration. It wasn't perfect, but uh, this went on for like a half minute. Uh, what was happening here? Well, it feels like there was a being there. It feels like a shadow being energy we were feeling, but it was a being to clear out the vibrations. It seems. Yeah, because um, I tried to tap into, like, it felt like a combination of a, of the way the, the vibration was going off of both eyes mm -hmm. where I could start seeing clearly, mm -hmm. but I, I haven't been able to tap into that. So there was an external third party there that was helping me. That's what it seems like. Well, it seems like the 
the being there was focusing on the video itself also like watching it with you uh but it feels like it was mostly just tapping into your vibrations clearing your energy field what it seems like hmm. uh, is uh, there a way that i can work with this being or does this being have any messages or how, how to well yeah just that sometimes it's like it brought more focus to you right uh, so many of you feel out of focus but that's because that's the reality you're in you need to be in that form for right now for society and its growth right right so this show so you focusing like that shows that you're going through a sh so you shift timelines there also so you brought an energy field to you from what we're seeing from our point of view. So you yeah. the, I believe another timeline will shift. It'll, yeah. This will happen sporadically. Yeah, it feels, it's been happening randomly where timeline shifts where I'm looking at the street lights at night and they're different color, you know? Yeah, yeah it's like, what, what, what's going on here? And then it goes back to normal like an hour later. Yeah, you're tuning yourself to a higher vibration. So you're going to a different... So at that point with the video, there was something else there. But... I believe you're experiencing it with it. You know, I was experiencing it with you. Okay. But but yeah, you're you're like you're focusing yourself. So you're turning yourself on, turning yourself off, and it shows something's on its way. Then. Very so, cool. There's a shift coming that needs you at your frequency. So, all right, I get that. Because you can turn yourself on all the time. It's obviously it's like you're kind of like an air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> And you're just clearing the energies out. And many others here and every you know, others watch can do the same thing, but you know you gotta be careful. you know, you do that, you know, the world's not ready for it, obviously. But when you're doing that automatically there's a reason for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it happened automatic and then it kinda I had yeah. to concentrate to hold that vibration just yeah. the, the specific way that it was because yeah. if I deviated from it, it would start to get fuzzy again, but that was interesting. So focusing just on that timeline, like that energy, that you know the energy it feels like, so just focus on that timeline shift. And you'll know when it needs to come and when it doesn't. So. Right, right. Well, thank you for that. Um, for my second question, um, I'm grateful for the position I find myself in at this moment, but I feel like I really want adventure in my life mm -hmm. or maybe just feeling like life itself is an adventure. Does my, this is interesting. Does my ego have a memory of any forgotten dreams that I had for myself that would spark like the wild side of my inner child again? Well, when you see that, we see like, like a Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Reality is that yes, but all of that was real. So, yeah, that's your uh, inner self. And we got a grand time with that too. But yeah, holding a sword and talking to wizards and witches and things like that. You also been a wizard in that type of reality too. Right. So, like something. The, is there anything more applicable? Something that I can embrace now going forward uh, that may have some sort of connection with this world and where it's going. Uh, well, that would be just future timelines, how you would visualize them. Mm. Like, how would you visualize the future? This crystallized world, a pink world, pink planet. Like, you just get Im images of that. That's what, that's the only thing we can offer with that. Mm. that just, um, okay. So, there's things that you'll see in the future. Um, uh, healing the past. Is also uh, maybe not your past or your past if you want to, but or Earth's past, like the hidden histories. There's a lot of hidden histories here that are not being made, you know, broadcast. Yeah, it feels like um, I'd like to do that. I'd like to go deeper into that, but um, mm -hmm. it just seems I don't have the tools or the connection, you know, yet. You know, we could, like you said, the world needs me in my vibration mm -hmm. or where I'm at. You know, uh, so is there's some sort of you know like um, light at the end of the tunnel where I'll be able to go into that more deeper? But uh. well, only thing I'm giving you right now just focus on the now, right? And just focus on the now and what you feel like you need to do for that moment, and images and connections will be made as it's needed. Yeah, because when I'm in those now moments, uh, I feel like I want to go 
deeper into like what are the galactic connections you know know, like what well what's inspiring that kind of behavior and where did that come from and Mm -hmm. you know things like that you know if i had ivan's ability to channel that i'd be doing that all day (laughs) you know out of you know different things that you know tickle my curiosity but well um yeah, I think we just got blocked of what we're about to say. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. You know, I went out long enough. I appreciate yes, your guys' so. help and assistance this evening. Blessings. Yes, yes. Blessings to you all in your journeys. Much love to you all. All right. Thank you, all right, muscles.